All right, what's happening YouTube? In today's video, we'll take a look at how good is the iPhone 12 Pro Max in low light. So in this video, we'll go over the specs of the cameras and we'll take a look at some photos and videos. And I will share with you my experience when it comes to taking photos and shooting video with this phone in low light. So let's start off with some specs, okay? What do you get for your money in terms of cameras when getting an iPhone 12 Pro Max? Well, you're getting three of them. You're getting a 65 millimeter telephoto, 13 millimeter ultra wide, and you're getting a 26 millimeter main camera. Now the biggest difference from last year's iPhones is that the main camera's sensor is 47% bigger and is physically stabilized. Both of these things will help out a lot when it comes to filming and taking photos in low light. Also all of these sensors are 12 megapixels, even the main sensor is 47% bigger but it keeps the same 12 megapixels and it's a good thing in my personal opinion because each of these pixels can be bigger. So frankly I hope that phone photography's future isn't cramming as much megapixels as we can on these tiny sensors. I think it should be this sort of balancing act between making bigger sensors and giving them reasonable amount of megapixels and I think 12 megapixels is perfectly fine for online social media content creation, which I imagine these phones will mostly be used for. Hey, but that's just my personal opinion. Let me know down in the comments if you think 12 megapixels is enough or should have iPhone added a bit more megapixels to the 12 Pro Max. Another thing to mention is that all of these photos I'm going to be showing you are straight out of the camera, unedited. Uh, this is what you get when you take photos and film videos with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. But anyways, let's move on and let's look at some photos. First of all, let's look at these three photos. Not really low light, but just to give you a sense of what to expect from these three cameras. And all three of these cameras look really good. The telephoto looks good, ultra wide looks good, main camera looks good as well. But one thing that I want to mention is that I noticed that there's a slight color difference between the ultra wide and the main camera. I've been looking at these photos for like 30 minutes now, but to me it seems that the main camera in these two specific photos is tilting towards magenta, while as the ultra wide is more greenish. Let me know down in the comments if you see the same thing. Uh, and also if you want to see the original photos and videos, I will leave a link down in the description so you can download the photos and videos do a bit of pixel peeping and draw your own conclusions. All right, let's move on to two more photos, the telephoto and main camera. Uh, I forgot to take a photo with the ultra wide. I'm sorry about that. But the telephoto camera looks good. We have the same bridge. It's closer to sunset now. You can see the lights turn on on the bridge. It looks nice, crisp, clean. The telephoto lens looks good. The thing to notice though is that this was the last photo I took with the telephoto lens because after this it was too dark and the telephoto camera shut off. So what Apple does is when it gets too dark it starts using the main camera also as the telephoto camera just by digitally zooming in. Same shot uh, just with the main camera, looks nice, crisp, clean, not a lot to say about this shot right here. Let's move on to the next two photos and we're not going to talk about the telephoto anymore because uh, it just shut off on me. So these two photos, both with some Christmas trees and fairy lights in them, both of them look really good. The main camera looks obviously better. The ultra wide, it's starting to lose a little bit of detail and it's starting to get a little bit soft. I think to keep in mind, it was really cloudy out and uh, it was quite dark. There wasn't a lot of light to work with. So I think both cameras performed really well, but at this stage, you're starting to see that the main camera is really pushing ahead. Okay, next two shots, I was taking these photos in this small beautiful little town and look at this photo I mean it looks gorgeous from the main camera it looks beautiful there's a lot of details it's really close to what it looked like in real life it just looks really good it was just around sunset there's not a lot of light the street lanterns are not really bright it's a small old town the city council is trying to keep the old town vibe so you get these really nasty yellow light bulbs but it really works with the town this image it came out really good i really loved how this photo looked like now looking at the ultra wide same place same time it's still good it doesn't look bad by any means but you can see that it's not as sharp as the main camera there's just a bigger gap between performance of the main camera and the ultra wide and that's to be expected, you know, the ultra wide is a sort of a secondary camera, the main camera is, well, 
the main camera. So I'm not saying that the ultra wide is bad, it's just the main camera is a lot better. Now in these next two shots we have Cynthia, she's standing in front of this arch and uh, two things to point out here. First of all, the main camera, it looks really good. There's a lot of texture and there's a lot of details in the bricks, in the arch and it overall looks really good and clean. When you're looking at the ultra wide though, you can see that the image is a lot more yellow and look at the details in the arch, there's a lot less details in the bricks of the arch and also look at the color of the gate. It's a lot more yellow, it's a lot warmer and at this point there's not a lot of light, the ultra wide camera is starting to struggle, it doesn't look bad. Now these two photos, these two photos were taken with the main camera and I wanted to point out that it's really important that you keep your phone steady when you're shooting in dark places like these. I had the night mode on for 10 seconds. And both of these photos you can see in one shot I was able to hold the phone really steady and the shot turned out nice and bright for what it is because it was pretty much pitch black and the only light was coming from the bridge. Looking at this one, same 10 seconds I wasn't able to keep the phone as steady and it's a lot darker. So if you would have a tripod with you I think you would get some great looking images even in severe low light conditions. Now looking at the ultra wide, yeah at this point it's really not usable, it was 10 seconds, it's really soft, it's really Moshe, there's not a lot of details in the photo at all. To be fair though, I wasn't expecting both cameras to do as good as they did in these low light conditions. I don't think a lot of people would be taking photos when it's this dark outside. And the last photo that I wanted to show you was this, me holding an iPhone 12 Pro Max in my hand and as you can see if you get close enough to the subject, this was shot with the main camera, you can get some decent looking bokeh in the background, which is always nice. Alright, that's enough of photos, let's look at some videos and let's go back to the location where Cynthia was standing in front of the Ark. And as you can see, the main camera, it does a pretty good job, it doesn't do as well as it does with photos, but that is to be expected. With photos you have night mode, you can expose a photo for 10 seconds and the camera has 10 seconds of time to work on just one shot. Whereas when filming videos, your camera has to work overtime, it has to process 24 photos, at least 24 photos each second. So I was expecting that it's going to do a bit worse when it comes to video, but it's still good. Like the main camera still does a good job, even though it was really dark in this location. Now looking at the ultra wide, and yeah, the ultra wide, it doesn't look good. It was too dark at this point for the ultra wide camera. Next up, let's look at these two shots where we're back in Capital City and you can see the main camera. It looks beautiful, it looks really nice, uh, although you have to notice these spots on the video and those are reflections from the main camera and this is a huge issue I think with the iPhone 12 Pro Max and if you're planning to buy the phone, something you need to keep in mind. Look at this video I shot of the background of my studio and you can see the LED sign is completely reflected like within a mirror. I think this is a huge flaw with the iPhone 12 Pro Max because this is really intrusive and frankly I don't really like it. To me it's not really a deal breaker but it's something you definitely need to keep in mind if you're thinking about picking this phone up. So this issue occurs with the telephoto and uh, main camera, not so much with the ultra wide. It's not intrusive in some situations, but in some specific situations it can be really severe and really intrusive. It really depends on how you're shooting. Now I just wanted to say that the lens flares, it's normal, all lenses have lens flares, it's not a big deal. But these are more of reflections and these can be really intrusive. So as I said, something just to keep in mind. I'm moving back to the video I showed you, the main camera looks good, look at the ultra wide, the ultra wide doesn't look as good, there's really not enough light for the ultra wide to film videos in these conditions, you know it's getting soft, there's a lot of noise, not a lot of details, uh, so in this situation I would avoid using the ultra wide and just shoot with the main camera. I have a bias for ultra wides, I love shooting with ultra wides and I would love to see a really really strong low light performer ultra wide camera on the iPhone next year. Now these next two shots, gingerbread house in a Christmas tree, the main camera looks absolutely beautiful, there's a lot of details, although there's a lot of the reflections, you can see those dots on the screen, those are reflections from the fairy lights, but otherwise the image, the video looks really really good and clean. The ultra wide doesn't do as well as the main camera, even though this was kind of weird to me because there was plenty of light, the ultra wide just didn't do as good as I expected in this shot. I mean in most cases the ultra wide was better than I expected, but in this specific shot 
it did worse and I'm not really sure why because I really thought that there's going to be enough light for the ultra wide to look good. Now the next thing that I want to point out that I noticed only after looking at the videos is that the best videos you can get from your iPhone is when you underexpose the video ever so slightly. You get rid of a lot of the noise and the video just becomes a lot crisper and cleaner. Now you have to be careful with this because you don't want to go overboard because then you're going to lose detail that you just can't recover. But if you do it ever so slightly, it has to be really subtle, you can get rid of a lot of the noise and make the videos look really nice and clean. If you want to download the videos, the photos, take a look for yourself and draw your own conclusions. But my conclusions are as follows. Don't use the telephoto lens in low light. You really shouldn't be using it in low light. It's just going to switch to the main camera. Second of all, the main camera, it's really a strong performer, both with photos and videos. But keep in mind that in specific situations, you can get these crazy reflections that can be really, really intrusive. So if you're planning to shoot something with the ultra wide in low light, you really need to think about your lighting to get the best looking videos but I would suggest just avoid shooting videos in low light with the ultra wide if there's not a lot of city lights you know traffic lights whatever around you so yeah that's all for me that's my conclusions that's what I had to say so I hope this video gave you a good insight of what to expect from the iPhone 12 Pro Max when it comes to taking photos and filming video so if you watched the video so far huge thank you to you I hope you enjoyed it drop a like on this video and I'll see you guys in the next video